Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to see you. I was expecting uh, five friends and five uh, lost people, so uh, it's much more. Um, we are going to talk about uh, Douglas uh, uh, Poiker, and that is a very old system from the uh, late 70s, and um, I have uh, some updates to share with you. So, Douglas Poiker was used for uh, reducing the number of points in a polyline. So, uh, when I talk about the polyline, you imagine a line that seems to be a curvy line, but in fact, it's a small segments of straight lines that are connecting by a point of noise. I use the name of a uh, point. Um, but when we, it's, it's easy to reduce the number of points. You throw one uh, out of two or nine out of 10 and you have uh, less points, but the shape of your uh, polyline is uh, destroyed. So you want to get the um, to, to um, you, you don't want to, to change the, the shape of the, the polyline. So the Douglas uh, Poiker algorithm says that you have to draw a base baseline between the start and the end point. And when you do, you have done that. Um, you search for the point that is at the that is the most distant from the baseline on on the on the polyline. And you keep that point, and then you separate your polyline in a left part and a right part, and you do it again, and again, and again, and again. When do you stop? Uh, well, you stop when uh, you have reached the maximum number of points. That is one criteria. And the other criteria is to stop when your the, the error that you have, so the, the, the distance that you measure is if it is less than uh, the maximum error that you want to have. So this is an example of a, a polyline. And I'm applying the Douglas Poiker uh, algorithm. So I, the red line is my baseline. And I'm looking for the point that is at maximum the, the, the farthest from the baseline. And that's the point there up. So I keep that one. And I do it again. Here with the green line, with the green baseline, I search for the biggest, bigger uh, distance, and I keep that point. I do the same on the other part, and again, and again, and again. So I just told you that there are two um, criteria when when you you stop the algorithm, or you give a maximum number of points. I want to uh, have only thousand points then you have 1,000 points, you just stop. And the other is when the distance that you measure is, uh, is less or equal to the maximum allowed. In each segment, of course. Huh? Uh, if you have a, uh, your line and you have divided it in 1,000 pieces, well, you have to see that in each piece the criteria is uh, followed. <coughs> Douglas Poik, Douglas Poiker has one problem, maybe more than one, but uh, this one is uh, the annoying one. You have to apply the algorithm only when you know your last point. So if you imagine that you are uh, tracking uh, with a GPS um, your trip to start of France, you have to wait until you are in your destination point to start to uh, reduce your uh, number of points. Maybe you, if you have a, a small device, maybe you have uh, already exceeded your maximum memory. So it could be a problem. The results of uh, Douglas Poiker are quite good. And probably, uh, at least the, the community says that it is the, the best. And it is the best because the, the quality of the resulting polyline, the, the simplified polyline, is something that is very nearly what people can do. So we ask the people to do it by hand. And I will not say that they have chosen the same point, but the polyline that they have when it is simplified is, near, is 
very comparable to the douglas poikers algorithm. So why, to, why do I need to update the douglas poikers uh, algorithm? I can't wa wait until the endpoint. And there are um, several uh, reasons for that. And one of the reasons is that I can't store them all. Right? The, the example going from here to start of class is a small device. You probably will uh, have not enough memory in a small device. Um, maybe I cannot compute it fast enough when I arrive. Maybe I have a larger device uh, going to start of class and when I said to my navigation system shut down, it has to start all the computation. But I turn the key of my car and the power is, is out and it's too late to compute it. That's another reason. Uh, maybe I need to transmit the data, but transmitting the data, it's easy uh, if you have a cable, if you have uh, Wi-Fi, but when you are on in your car, uh, transmitting at regular, at every time that you have a point, will cost you a lot on your uh, GSM. Or if you have a, another um, example of transmitting, well, there is all, always a cost. And why should you transmit all your data to throw it away afterwards? So you are better to have the updated Douglas Poiker and to throw it on the go. Okay, I just uh, told that about the, the, the data transmitter uh, on a, a mobile um, network. Um, the cost is probably uh, too high, but I can wait a little bit. So if I don't have the most recent data, it's okay. I can wait for a certain amount of time. So the Douglas Poikers W, W is me. Uh, I made um, I have two, two um, types of, of points. And the one who I want to keep, I give them the name of essential point, okay? And all the other points are observation point. An observation point can be promoted to be an essential point. Don't, I don't create new points. I keep po the essential one and I throw away the observation point. Um, well, that's the, the bad thing about observation point. They are doomed to be uh, dumped, promoted or dumped. Okay, that's life of a, a point. So when you start, the, your very first point, well, it's like uh, when you have a company, if you are the first one, you get promoted. Yeah, you are CEO. Well, the first observation point is immediately promoted to essential. And um, for the rest, it's look like uh, Douglas Poikers. That means I have to wait, and I wait until I have two observation points, okay? So I have an essential one, and I have two uh, observation points. And then I apply something that looks like uh, Douglas Poikers. I draw a baseline between the last essential point, that was the very first one, and the last observation point, and then it's like I'm, I'm looking from, uh, so imagine there is here so such a line. I take the, I position myself at the last observation point and I look to the last essential point and I look through a pipe. So the form of the, of the, it's a straight pipe, but the form of the pipe is completely up to you. You can choose a square pipe or a round pipe or oval pipe, I don't care. You look in it and if all your observation points are into the pipe, you have nothing to do. Then you take the, 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 the next one, then the next one, and you still keep uh, looking to the pipe. And if you lose one of the observation pipe, uh, points because it goes out of the pipe, that one is promoted to uh, essential point. Okay? It's like in business. If you are that good and you come out of the pipe, you are promoted to essential point, okay? <coughs> so the, 
the, the form of the pipe is in, in fact your uh, function um, about uh, the distance. So if you are talking in two dimension, it's just a rectangle. And if you go out of the rectangle, uh, you are promoted. If you look in three dimension, then uh, you can have uh, the pipe and the point that goes out of the pipe is promoted to uh, ascension point. All the other observation point that are behind um, or older than the new promoted one, sorry, they are dumping. They will never be promoted. It is not necessary to keep them uh, in memory. So you can dump it and you, if you have to transmit your position, you transmit the new promoted um, ascension point. Yeah, it's just what I told. Um, of course, it could be that if you need to follow, let's say, uh, a truck, you want to be updated at least every half hour. Then, even if, he, if the, the, the truck is on a straight line, no point is being uh, promoted but just keep the last one promoted, it's just time. It's like in business, if everyone is retired, the guy who, who stays is promoted to be the new CEO. Um, <coughs> and you, you, you do it again and again. So you, you have your, your last um, uh, essential point. You have or you not have observation point, but you each time that you have a new one, you just do the new algorithm again. You look in your pipe. If there is one out, it's promoted. So that's nice. Um, but if you are in a very, very long straight road, like the one between San Francisco and Los Angeles, I, I, uh, or uh, Las Vegas, I've not been there, but it seems to be a, a very long straight line. Or if you are in a uh, train, in Australia, there is something like 600 kilometers straight rail. Yeah, you maybe you need to have a maximum buffer size, and it's just like the time interval. If your buffer is nearly full, promote the last one, dump the others, and yeah, that point is just lucky, and you keep it. All right. What are the results of um, the updated Douglas Poiker? Well, you have a little bit more points than in the Douglas Poiker. And you have nearly the same quality, which is not a surprise because <laughs> when you are doing that, you don't know what, what's coming. And if you wait your endpoint, then Okay, it's easy to be better, okay? It's not, uh, well, it's not a big deal. It, you have to choose what you are going to do. And if you are um, little on, on your memory, then it's, it's uh, acceptable. <coughs> so you can just do the same with non-geographic data. It's a little bit harder to visualize, but I have done it with uh, temperature. So you keep the temperatures outside, for example. Well, most of the time the temperature d doesn't change. So you don't need to uh, keep every uh, observation point. And if the temperature raises because it's morning, the sun shines, then the temperature starts to, to uh, then you will promote one of the observation temperature to essential and it the idea is just uh, the same. There are some problems in the updated uh, Douglas Poiker. You must take into account that you could have straight lines that can be uh, quite long. You cannot use the criteria with the number of points because you don't know how long you will travel again uh, after it. So the only criteria that you can apply is the maximum error criteria. So you, you have to choose an error. Your GPS is, has an error. And 
if your GPS gives you a uh, horizontal dilution of, pollu of position, as it's, it's called, um, of six meters, well, you have, it's, it's logic to have a maximum error from at least that value. It doesn't make sense. If your uh, thermometer doesn't give you uh, something better than one degree, you cannot think of... Uh, you have, um, if, if your uh, thermometer only gives you an accuracy of one degree, well, your maximum error must be greater, or otherwise you don't know what you are doing. Okay, um, it's a little bit hard to make uh, a, a demonstration of it, but I have a, a track of a Swiss paraglider. You know the paraglider? That's the guy with the kind of, of parachute, and it's not, not that the Swiss are better or not uh, <laughs> as other uh, people, but uh, in Switzerland they make some trips over the mountains and they have, so it's the problem is certainly a three-dimensional one because sometimes they just keep turning around to get altitude and that is something that is uh, a little bit rare if you are using the standard uh, Douglas pointer. If your maximum error is bigger than the circle, it could be disappearing uh, at a certain moment. But um, it looks like this. And it's only a part of it. it it's a, a real flight. I have uh, 899 <coughs> observation points, and that is my polyline. So you see the, the, the circle here and there, and also eights when he's trying to get some ascensional um, uh, altitude gain. I have run the Douglas Poiker uh, two-dimensional with a maximum error of 10 meters and I have 347 points that are promoted. If I do it without looking what comes after my uh, the point which I'm processing, so the DPW uh, two dimension, I have 375 points. If I do it on three, so you hardly see the, the difference. So, so wh when I said that the, um, the quality of the updated Douglas Poiker is nearly the same as the Douglas Poiker, I, I'm not lying here. Y you can see, I will show you where the differences are, but the differences are can most be seen in, in the straight line. Um, so that is uh, Douglas Poiker three-dimensional, and this is the updated one. Do you see the points that are changing? There are some points changing, but the overall um, shape of the polyline is, is the same. So to put all the results uh, on the line, I had 899 points with a maximum. I, I should have taken 900. Uh, it's not for one point. Oh, just lie, but I, I cannot lie. Um, maximum error of 10 meters, and then you, you can see here the, the differences. So I have 8% um, more points on the two-dimensional, and I have less than 1% more points on the three-dimensional uh, one. So I think it's, it's a good idea to have, um, not to have to wait until the end point of a polyline before simplifying it. And I think it will be more and more usable in a situation where you have to um, report your uh, position or if you have small uh, devices. Think about a watch or a GPS, smaller on, on your bicycle, also uh, the smaller and, and lighter. So I made that in a sprint to have a lot of time to answer your questions. <laughs> Who is going to put the first question? Yes. No, it is, uh, no, 
it, it is not used in practice. Um, I had a course about GIS uh, in 2002 here at the, the VUB, um, not far from here. And when the prof was explaining Douglas Parker, he said, the problem is that you have the endpoint and there is no way it is impossible to, uh, to do it in another way. Well, yeah, impossible. Uh, that's uh, a challenge. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what, what he, he, he said after that because I was thinking it must be possible. And, and I had the idea of this pipe and, and, and um, afterwards I, I, I put it on, on paper, my ideas on paper. I, I got back to him and say, hey prof, uh, I have something very interesting here. I, I think I have uh, uh, resolved the impossible problem. He had a look and he said, oh, if you think that it's workable, then you have to compare it to uh, Douglas Parker and you have to read all this. And he make a lot of copies of, of very interesting things that I had to, to read. And I read them. It took some time to understand what those people were uh, trying to explain. And it was only, well, it's, it's not too bad. Huh? It, it, I don't want to diminish their work, but it was a way of accelerating the computation of the, the algorithm. But they didn't change anything on the algorithm itself. So I started to write uh, something uh, to show that the quality of the modified uh, Douglas Parker was nearly equal to the original one. And I said, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to, uh, to get a, a, a patent on it. And a patent, if you have eight different points, uh, you, you lost, well, people can use uh, your, your, your ID into something else. So I said, I have to change, I have to go from 2D to, to three-dimensional. And that was a little bit more math and I have other things to do, so uh, I drop it uh, after a while. And then I said, I will never be rich, not in that way. Um, so I'm going to write in a very, um, in, in um, uh, some uh, scientific uh, book or uh, publication. I got back to the prof, I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to write, I'm, I'm, maybe I will not be rich, but I will be famous. <laughs> but the list of things that you have to do and, and uh, then I decide to uh, share it with you today. Okay, more questions? So I hope to see you uh, again next year, again at FOSDEM, when I would like to talk about the same thing, but about the temperatures and all other things that are not uh, spatial uh, related. And it will be probably in the embedded uh, dev room. Okay, so see you next year. <laughs>